Esther chapter 4. <clears throat> now we get into heart, ache, and pain, and sorrow, which is going to be the tribulation period. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes, which sign of repentance, sign of sorrow. It's like tearing the flesh. And put on sackcloth with ashes. It's getting to the bare necessities of life. Sackcloth is not very comfortable to be put on. I mean, the next best thing to sackcloth is a suit with a tie. I mean, not with a suit with ashes. Well, they say ashes, ashes, dust to dust. But uh, things burnt up. Things that will not come back again. And went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. Almost like someone's nuts, but he's not. He's in lamentations. He, he, he's a burden has happened. And this is what's going to happen in tribulation period. And came even before the king's gate. For none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. Now, it's a little side note put in there that what Malachi is going to do now is against the rules, against the law. Is he wrong? Well, there's nowhere in the, in the law where they're commanded to put on, you know, to, to rent their clothes and all that. It says, in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews. Why would the Gentiles be upset? Imagine when, however, Satan announces his word that he's going to kill all Jews. Well, let me ask you a question. What was it like during World War II when they knew that Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party were out to get him. There was fear and trembling. There's a story, and I don't know if it's true or not, but probably is true, that when the troops were going out, and here they're in this Jewish commune, they're knocking on doors looking to kill. And the Jewish families inside behind the door closed, and the troops are coming down the street. They know they're coming to the house. I don't know what it is, but they killed an animal that was in the house and let the blood run underneath the door. And when the troops finally came to the house, they saw the blood on the doorstep. So the job's already been done here. Move on to the next house. Listen, they gathered them up for the slaughter. And it was publicly proclaimed. Only America did not believe what was going on in Germany. You know, when the news finally came, when Jewish people wrote to the families in, in America and the letters were read and they, no, 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 nothing like that could ever happen. No, you got, yes, it was. So you got to put Disneyland above both sides of the coast of America because she doesn't believe nothing. Read the newspapers. Look at the media. It's all evil. It's all wickedness. Yes, it's happening. It happened during Esther's time. It happened during World War II. And it's going to happen again to the Jews in the tribulation. And you would think that the people like the United Nuts over there in New York City and all the Arabians, all the Ishmaelites, and all the Middle Eastern would be as happy as punch. That this is happening to the Jews. Don't believe me? Read about Edom. Um, Habakkuk, is it? Writes about, you You know, when, when, uh, when the Jews left Edom, you, you trapped them. You sent them to Babylon. You turned them over to the enemy. You rejoiced that they were in suffering. You rejoiced that they were being persecuted. You rejoiced at their destruction. And now where is Edom today? So you think the Bible is a dead book. It's not. It's a living book. 
It's going to happen again among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. And you know, it's amazing when you go through the book of Esther and Nehemiah, Ezra and Nehemiah, I mean, you don't ever hear about this. The mailmen went out, the post went out with the papers, and it's been proclaimed, it's been published. Now all the Jews are fearing their life. Eleven men sat up in the upper room fearing their life the night that Jesus came walking through the door. Just before Jesus came walking through the door. There's going to be great fear among the Jews. So Esther's maids. Wait a minute. Weep and wailing. And many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So it's something the Jews would do. Today America. You're in the, you pop the pill. Drink down the drink. Smoke something. Do more damage to your body. And Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved. And she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him. But he refused, he, re he received it not. He's not going to, he's in mourning. You're marking yourself who you are. What's going on? You're in a place you're not supposed to be, doing what you're not supposed to. Put some clothes on. Stop it. The king's going to come through. He's going to kill you. What did the Jews during, do during Hitler's time? They came to America and changed their name. A lot of your Jewish names are not Jewish names. They had to change their identity. That messes up the genealogy. Then called Esther to Esther for Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her. And gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was so. Well, she's giving orders. She's the queen. Why won't you do this, uncle? What's your problem? She's looking out for his life. Listen, Nehemiah was afraid to be sad in the, in the king's presence when he was his cupbearer. Here's a guy in sackcloth, he's bailing, he's whining, he's got ashes on him. So Hatchet went forth to Malachi unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Malachi, uh, Mordecai told him all that was happened to him, and the sum of the money that Haman had, prom had promised to pay to the king's treasurer, for the Jews to destroy them. Water my throat down. Wanted. Dead or alive reward. You thought that those western pollsters were something new. You thought that maybe a guy's picture in the post office was something new. No, it's in B.C. 510. They just didn't have a picture of a face. It just said Jews. I wanted Folster. He told this guy who, who's working for the queen, he says, listen, you're not going to believe what just happened. I know you know who Haman is because he's been exalted in the, in the throne. He's been exalted in the, in the office. And he now wants to kill all of us 
and he has promised money. You think that's all that Mordecai does? What you, look what he does in verse 8. And he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shimshan to destroy them. Mordecai gives the proof to the queen. The written proof. Just don't go back and tell Esther, blah, 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 blah. Here is the proof. Only way that uh, Mordecai could have done this outside of the written proof is by the scriptures that have two or three present. He would call, if he didn't have the written proof, he would call two or more Jews over and say, Listen, tell this guy what's going on. And he'll go back and tell Queen Esther. But he's got it written proof. Listen, Hezekiah, when he got the letter from, from the opposing king, he went up to the Lord. He opened up that letter out and said, Lord, look. Did you just see what they're saying about you? I got to say something. If you can't say and put your name to it in writing, it ain't worth nothing. Because this is now written proof. Now, I'm going to say something, and you don't have to take this. You can throw it in the garbage can. I believe somehow, some way, God's going to record all papers. This has been written down since 510 B.C., which is 2013. And we still know what the letters say. Isn't that amazing? Jesus Christ said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So this letter has already been recorded in heaven for eternity. Now, I don't know if he's going to bring actual papers and tape recorders and CDs and all that, but he's going to bring something. And I feel sorry for any hypocrite in Hollywood with all their scripts and all that if God brings them all up and just starts reading to them. All the lies they did for two hours. Your name's Sam, Tom? I don't think so. Sam again, Tom? I don't think so. Sam again, Tom? I don't think so. How many lies we up to now, Gabriel? <laughs> In a two-hour movie. It's on paper. Oh, we beat God. We put it, we put it on the computer. We're going to go paperless. We haven't gone paperless. Matter of fact, we use more paper being under paperless society. So he gives the copy to to uh, Hatchet to give to the queen. Proof. Written proof. And to declare it unto her. And to charge her. Imagine him going to charge the queen. That she should go in unto the king. And to make supplication unto him, and to make requests before him for her people. Also, telling her not to tell the king who she is has been a providence of God. Had Haman known that she was a Jew, he would have twisted and working things out. Now he's now he's telling her, you gotta go before your husband and you gotta tell him what's going on to your people. And Hatchet came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spake to Hatchet, Hatchet and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death. You can't just walk into the king and say, hi. You have to be called. He has to call you. Or you got to go through the right person. And that right person goes before the king and then the king calls you. There is one law of him to put to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. 
You want a presence with the king? You you step before him. You better hope he holds that scepter, that that rod out. Because if he don't hold the rod out, you, you lost your neck. Your head will be rolling. That was the law. I have not been called to come in unto the king these 30 days. A dire month. Is that 30 days absence for, you know, husband and wife? It says throne room. Before the throne. Well, couldn't he and she talk when... If it's just a throne room and she could be with the king as husband and wife, it looks like they did not talk any business. Or maybe it is 30 complete days without, without them two being together. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. And Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that... Thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Esther, you think you're going to survive this? The decree, the law that can't be changed among the Medes and the Persians were all Jews. That includes you, dear. The king will kill you and you have his beauty pageant again to find another woman. Don't think you're, you're somebody. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, you don't say anything. Then shall their enlarge then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, other than you, Esther. Salvation and deliverance, overcoming the enemy, will be from somebody else. Notice Mordecai believes what God told David, what God told Abraham. There will always be a seed. There will always be Jewish people. They are God's people. He says, listen, enlargement, that means more than what there is now. And deliverance, victory over the enemies, will come from somebody else if you don't do your job. God will stand for the Jews. God has put you there for you to do this job. It's coming by you. And if you don't do it, you'll die. God will find somebody else. You know what happens when you don't do your job as a Christian? God will throw you off to the side somewhere and find somebody else to do the job. But it won't be as blessingful, it won't be as meaningless as God has sought you to do the work. Because if he's got to get somebody else, that's second, that's not the first choice. And there have been times in all of our lives, as God has chosen us to be that first choice to do something, and we backed off and kept our mouths shut. Which we're not supposed to do. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. You and me, honey, are going to be killed if you don't do nothing. It's the only family she's got. And who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as it. How do you know that this is not the providence of God, Esther? How do you know that, God, which we know, God, this is why God did it. We know what Mordecai doesn't know. God put that girl in that position to protect her people. God put Jesus Christ in the spot to, to, to save his people. John chapter 1. And Jesus Christ went all the way, no matter how many times the devil, Satan, tried to stop him. You imagine how many times after this happens, Esther was probably stopped by Satan. 
No, don't go in there. He's going to kill you. I gotta go in there. And then maybe her maids are coming. No, no, Esther, don't, don't go in there. No, don't. We don't want to lose you as queen. Think of Ashtag. Look how quick he got rid of her. He's saying that God may have put you in that office. God may put you somewhere you don't like because he wants to use you there for a purpose. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. They're going back and forth. But she's sending somebody in between to talk to her and her uncle. Here's her words. Go. You know how the Bible always tells the saints of God to go. Never tells them to sit down Gather together all the Jews that are present in Shinshan. Now that doesn't look good. All the Jews are going to be killed, so go and gather all the Jews together. What is wrong with this little girl? Thought I brought her up right. She wants us all to be in unity. She doesn't get it. Oh boy. And fast see for me. That's a serious prayer. Now there's all types of fast. There's all types of fast for medical conditions. You can't tell. When it comes to a fast, you can't say, hey, this is the rule. No. Some people do just water. Some people will drink milk. Some people with diabetes can only do it an hour rather than a day. It's between you and God on that serious matter. And neither eat, neither eat or drink. Fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink. Well, that's interesting. I thought fasting was not eating or drinking. Dude, what this fast is right here is all fleshly endurances. Don't come to you. There's one spot in the law that says don't come at your wives. When they're at the uh, Exodus 19, when they're about to have the Lord speak to them out of the mountain, the Ten Commandments, he says don't come unto your wives. Now, eat and drink, but listen. Says over there in Corinthians when Paul talks about the husband and wife, there you know what you got to abstain. For, there are times to abstain yourself for prayer, but don't be too long because Satan will come into your relationship. Sexual between a husband and a wife sometimes is a fast. I got 1 Corinthians 1, 8 to 11, but that's not the place I was just quoted. That's another one. I've got to find that verse to write that down here, because that's something good the Lord showed me. All right. Three, day, three days. And there's that three days again. How often that three days shows up in the, in the Word of God? Night or day? I guess you have your choice. Night or day. Could mean three days, night, or day. I also, my maidens, will. I was reading a note here, trying to hear. This goes with the thing here. I also, my maidens, will fast likewise. Now, here's a question I am my maiden, she's the queen. These maidens were given from the king. They're probably not Jewish.
probably Gentile maidens. They don't even know who she is. Is she going to tell them why the fast? Or she's going to say, okay, fast with me. I'm the queen. And so will I go in unto the king. Which is not according to the law. He hasn't called me. I'm going to break the law here. And then there's a teaching with the Bible teaching in Acts with Peter. If it violates the law of God. If man's law violates the law of God, you are to do what God tells you to do. If the law does not violate the, the law of God, the word of God, you obey the law. There's nothing in the Bible that says that you will go to hell for driving 55. But the Bible says if you kill somebody, even the New Testament, your blood is to be shed. And if you disobey the law, the Bible says in Romans 13, don't act so stupid when the law comes to your house. Providence of God, the providential nature of God here, stepping before the king to violate the law. She's doing what God wants her to do. If I perish, I perish. Do or die. Does she have faith in God there? That's a hard statement to make there. If I perish, I mean, if I die, I die. And that's the last time you, that's the last word you hear of her. The last word she lives, leaves with Mordecai, if I perish... <laughs> I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. And what a way to leave a chapter. Then you take that book over there, the book of Acts over there. Paul said, hey, listen, can I speak for myself? Yeah, go ahead. See you tomorrow night, Paul. Isn't that a great cliffhanger? Is that you know, if if you were reading a book and you know it's it's late, lying in bed with your spouse, you got them up because you got I gotta read one more chapter to find out what happened. What about oh, I read my three chapters, goodbye. <laughs> By the way, if you mark your Bible, you stop there and in chapter five you pick up on five twenty one. <laughs> See, so you, you leave Mordecai and Esther hanging for, for the next day. Next study, Esther, Lord willing. We're going to find out what happens to Esther. What happens to that little girl, young lady? If I die, I die. That's her last word. We'll find out what happens to her. Next time. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is
Pirates Pod.